started talking about what end behavior models were, and we got talking about uh, money and different values and things like that. Uh, we had a function that looked like this, this long polynomial function, and then another function that was equal to just the leading term, just the highest power term. This is basically, you know, a polynomial like that, if you put in a value like 10, it's basically our number system, right? If you think about 3x to the fourth and that sort of thing, if you think way back, you'll skip down to here. If you think back to when you were you know, a little kid learning how the how you write numbers, right? If you write 2,347, right? When you're first learning what that means, each thing obviously is a place value. And probably at some point they had you write it out the long way, like 2,000, right? And so on. I won't bore you with writing that whole thing out, right? 2,340 and 7 or something like that. You might have been asked to do this, 2 times 1,000 plus 3 times 100 plus 4 times 10 plus 7 times 1, right? Again, not trying to insult your intelligence, but it's important to make connections with what we already know. Now that you are very sophisticated with understanding powers, you could say, so, thank you, you could write this as 2 times 10 to the 3rd plus 3 times 10 to the second, plus 4 times 10 to the first, plus 7 times 10 to the 0, or just 7, right? When we have a polynomial here like 2x to the third, plus 3x squared, plus 4x, plus 7, it's exactly just sort of our number system here, right? The higher up in the number, the more important that number is, right? The most important digit in a number is the first one, right? It's the most significant one. You talk about significant digits in, um, in chemistry or other things. The, the most significant to the magnitude of the number is this one. In chemistry, you're likely talking about the other end because you're talking about how the, the precision of the number what, you know, and how many significant digits you're adding or you're including. If you look at a number that, you know, it's more important usually to know that this is 2,000, not that there's 7 on the end, right? Get rid of the 7, you still have basically the same amount, more or less. The, the farther along here you go, okay, more or less this. Now, there obviously is a difference between 2,000 and 2,347. But if you make this now any value here, if it can be more than 10, if X could be 100 or 1,000 or a million, it's just going to really emphasize the difference. I mean, our, our number system is base 10, but if you changed it to base 100, like if we had 100 fingers before you had to use the next spot, right? We need a whole bunch more symbols, first of all, right? Because when we get to nine, we'd need another whole bunch of symbols before we started putting one over here, right? Um, and if you if if you make this if you make x a really big number here, this term completely dominates the other ones, right? Now we're talking about limits as you approach infinity, as x approaches infinity. So this becomes way more than that: millions, billions, trillions. These are completely insignificant. Then, and you can model a polynomial with a bunch of terms with just the leading dominant term once you're talking about limits as you approach plus or minus infinity. Okay, so that's that's what this is all about here. Now, the, the reason that this one is in here, I mean, we, we did that polynomial one, but the reason that this bizarre function is in here is because it has different behavior on either end. So if you graph this function, I think we were at the point where you were doing that and you hopefully got somewhere with it. I think this function looks something like this. On the left-hand side, it looks something like that. And then on the right-hand side, it looks like that, I think, right? Did you guys graph this? Did you, did you draw a graph of it? No, yes? You did? It looks different. It looks like a straight line on one side, but it looks like an exponential function on the other side. So on the, on the left, on this side, the left's harder. The left's harder not to model this way, but to, to look at it graphically, all you have to do is graph both functions and look at it, right? So if you, if you graph both functions here, I have this that uh, f of x is the function, x plus e to the negative x. g of x is going to be the model on the right, and h of x is the model on the left. So we'll look at the one on the right first, the one on the right being g of x. That, that's an end behavior model for it because... 
the bigger you make X, and we don't even have to go very far. You don't have to go up to millions and billions. It's almost the same by the time you get to six, right? It's almost, it looks, you know, on our scale here that they're almost identical. On the left, that function models it. It's harder to see that that function models it because, it, you know, on the screen that we have here, we haven't got there yet. But if we were to uh, try this, you know, if you, if you zoom out on the thing, Okay, you're going to get to a point where you, they're they're going to look like they're together, right? They're going to look the same, like that. Now, I mean, they're starting to look like they're more and more the same, and we're only out to six here, right? If you went out to thousands or millions, they're essentially the same graph, right? How many undoes kind of do I need to do here? If you show up, you know, if you want to show that one is graphically, you can't prove something graphically, but all you, you know, you can say, well, on the on the left-hand side, this other function just kind of goes like this, and it's starting to get closer. And on this side of the thing, um, that straight line is getting closer here. I don't think I drew it that well, but you can draw. Yeah, I didn't draw it that well. It should it should model y equals x. It might actually be easier to draw that one first, and then this one. Did it cross at zero? What is it? What's the value at zero? E to the e to the zero is how much? What's the value at zero? E to the zero, it should be one, shouldn't it? I'm thinking. Is that right? Okay, so it you know on this side it's like this, getting closer and closer to that. And this side it ramps up like that. Okay, does that make sense? That what an end behavior model is here? This function doesn't model it on the whoops. This function doesn't model it on the right, but it does model it on the left. I think they pass through there, but then it does that. But eventually they're gonna go closer together. As far as the algebra goes, if you can if you can show either that when you divide them, the limit of that quotient is one. What you're essentially showing is they're the same when you let x become a really big number. Okay, you're saying the behavior of the of that quotient. Okay, dividing them. When two things divide to give you one, again, we already I think mentioned this last time, right? A and B divide to give you one. It means they're the same number, right? A is equal to B. So we can either show that they their limit when you divide them is one, or we can just show that they're equal. The, that they well, it's it actually showing their limits are equal is a little dangerous sometimes because if it turns out to be infinity, if it's a finite limit, like if you get that the limit is three, then you can just show they both have a limit of three, so it must model it. But if you get that they both have a limit of infinity, which is what this would be, we can't really just show that they have the same limit because who knows if that actually really is the same. We'll do the right one first, or you, hopefully you managed to do the right one. Uh, if you want to check here that. The limit, the, on the right side, you're going to positive infinity. I'm going to start by writing f of x over g of x. And we want to see, does this equal 1? I don't really know if there's a symbol that is for, like, do we know if it's equal yet, but we're trying to show it? I don't think there is, right? There's a not equal, there's an equal. There's not a who knows if it's equal, right? But um, you can just go with that, right? Limit of... So we're going to put the function we have, x plus e to the negative x. And we're going to put the one we're trying to see if it's the same as here, x, right? Does that equal 1? It's like a proof, right? You're starting with a statement, and then you're working your way through and seeing if you can prove that it's true. Just like for trig identities, you did that same thing, right? You started with a statement, and you made sort of one change at a time until in the end you showed that the two sides were the same. That's a good way of doing a proof, right? Sort of a two-column proof here, although I'm not making it very nicely divided. If I was a real model teacher, I would be lining this up nicely for you. Well, I'd have better handwriting in the first place, but and it wouldn't be things like that. So this, I'm going to try and line it up like that. We have. What can I do with uh, what can I do with this? Remember, if you're trying to evaluate a limit, your first resort, if you're doing it algebraically here, is to try and change this stuff around before trying to ha have to resort to anything more difficult or not so obvious. What can we do with that? It's a fraction, algebraic fraction, where you have a single term on the bottom, so hopefully something jumps out at you here. Two terms divided by one. 
Didn't you guys just watch an assembly on how you're all supposed to be? Oh, I got the answer. X over X, right? It's true. We're all afraid to be wrong. We're all afraid to be wrong. We're trained at a very young age that it's bad to be wrong. Um, if you split it apart like that, then you can it more easily see what the what each part is, right? It's not obvious because at this point it looks like you have in you know it looks like you have infinity plus e to the negative infinity divided by infinity. That doesn't tell us anything, right? But if we split it apart, it's easier to see what we have here because we have one plus e to the negative x over x. I don't want to deal with negative exponents. I actually want to change it so that that's on the bottom because a negative exponent means it can go on the bottom, right? This thing on the top is the same as that on the bottom. Are we all okay with that? Negative exponent, reciprocal. Vice versa, negative exponent on the bottom would be you could put on the top of that fraction. So does this equal 1? Well, hopefully we'll be able to show that. Now you have a 1 here, and this, you can't really substitute in infinity, right? Because You, you don't go 1 over infinity times e to the infinity. But you can, again, you can think about that. You can just think, well, if I have a constant number divided by a bigger and bigger and bigger number, right? Infinity times e to the infinity is infinity. And 1 over infinity you can think of as constant number divided by infinity. Remember, I know it sounds silly and simple, but like one cookie, infinite number of people, you get zero, right? Even if it's two cookies and infinite number of people, even if it's a million cookies and infinite number of people, you get nothing, okay? A million cookies is a lot of cookies, but infinity is so much more. Anyways, if you've proved that it's equal, right, you get down to one equals one, again, it's like a... It's like a two-column proof like you would have done with trig identities. That's it, right? You could write some nice therefore statement at the end, right? Therefore, you know the three dots for therefore. <laughs> therefore, g of x is a right end behavior model for f of x if you want to sound, if you were being a model uh, mathematician and you wouldn't put the word of after that. And you'd think about what you're writing. Is a right end behavior model and so on, right? For f of x. Okay, I did the easier one just now, and there is a harder one. The harder one is the other side, and the only reason it's harder is because when you get to this point for one of these terms, it's hard to see why it's going to be what it is. A certain term we're going to realize is... We have to do some thinking there, but it's not so obvious. Here it was obvious why that turns out to be zero. It's not going to be so obvious for the other one. I'm actually going to put the left end behavior model on the left over here, even though I wrote it over there. Left on the right and the right on the left. Well, I'm going to go over here because I have some space. Left. What do we want to show? We want to show the limit is if we're trying to do the left, we want to pick the function that we're modeling it on on the left. Can you write that out? I'm going to stop this and because otherwise I'll run out of time here. Write out the expression. See if you can get down to the point of what I'm talking about where you're not sure what to do. I got the one minute warning. 